What's up, Whoopers? It's Vice here, and I'm coming at you with another of my 12 decks of Christmas. This is Whiskash. Uh, it's a mill card that came out in Obsidian Flames. The attack Raging and Rocking says, for each fighting energy attached to this Pokemon, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. And so, there, there are a few different ways you could probably play Whiskash. You could probably try and like run through the whole game using Raging and Rocking on several Whiskash that you set up throughout and try and mill out your opponent that way. The way that I've chosen to approach this card is to go for one massive Raging and Rocking. So you, you build up, you know, it could be 12, 15 plus energy on your Whiskash, and you just take out the entirety of their deck or a big chunk of it in, in one fell swoop. So you might be wondering, well, in a metagame filled with things like boss's orders and attacks that do far more than 140 damage, which is the HP that this Whiskash has, how do you propose to get all that energy into play? There must be some kind of strategy. Well, you'd be right. And so the way that this deck works is we wait until the very end of the game for Whiskash to hit the board, and we get there by way of Diancy and the ability Princess's Curtain. So this ability says, as long as it's in the active spot, Whenever your opponent plays a supporter from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to your bench basic Pokemon. So, what you do is you you fill your bench with basic Pokemon and you start setting up one of them in particular with energy. And the Pokemon that we're going to set up is Sandy Shocks because it has the ability Magnetic Absorption. It grabs energy from your discard pile and attaches to itself. So, it starts powering up. And then what you do at the very, very end of the game you use Thornton, which is a supporter that switches a basic Pokemon that you have in play with one from your discard pile. And it maintains things like effects and special conditions. And more importantly for us, turns in play. So on the last turn of the game, once you've got a Sandy Shocks with a million energy on it, you use Thornton on, on the Sandy Shocks. You replace it with a Barboach, which you should at this point have in the discard pile. And then you evolve it straight into Whiskash because it maintains its turns in play. And then you use Raging and Rocking. So generally the, the flow of the game is on the first turn, you just try and flood your board with Diancy. You want at all at all times you want to try and have two Diancy in play so that they can't go escape rope and then boss's orders. You always need Diancy in play so that they can never target the Sandy Shocks. They should never be able to target it. Right? And and between Jirachi, Manaphy, and Diancy, that it should be impossible for them to target it. There's very few ways for them to do it. Things like Catcher or Cross Switcher would be able to do it, but very few else, uh, very few other effects have the ability to, to reach your Sandy Shocks. And then every turn after you've lost a couple of prizes to them, um, you, you'll be able to start using Magnetic Absorption, so you just use that every turn. And you also want to attach your Reversal Energies to it too. Even though the Reversal Energies don't work on the Sandy Shocks, use the Thornton, replace the Sandy Shocks with the Barboach, and then, as I described before, you should end your final turn with a Barboach that has just, just so much energy on it. So, um... And then the last piece of the puzzle, or one, one of the important pieces of the puzzle, I should say, is Rotom. So you want this right from the very, from the very get-go because it, it just continually draws you cards. And so <clears throat> we like this because it's not really a liability on your bench when your opponent cannot target it with boss's orders, right? They can't target it down and take an easy two prizes. So because it's protected... Um, by the Diancy, we favor the instant charge. And it's also the reason why we use Sandy Shocks instead of Coridon EX, because Coridon EX ends your turn, Sandy Shocks can be used and you still get to have the rest of your turn, right? So you use Sandy Shocks and then you end your turn with Rotom. So, and then the rest of the deck is just cards to help you maintain like a really annoying board for your opponent to deal with. Uh, namely, we've got three Calamitous Wasteland, right, to increase the, the retreat cost of their basic Pokemon by one. And then the, the other piece of the puzzle is having four Counter Catcher. Because we're never taking prizes, we can always drag the Pokemon that we want to see them stuck on into the active. 
even if they don't get stuck permanently, it still forces them to commit cards to get the Pokemon out of the active position over and over. And so ideally, between Countercatcher and Calamitous Wasteland, they burn enough resources to have to <clears throat> use up cards in their deck, and then hopefully by the end, uh, you're able to get rid of the, the remaining cards in, in their deck with Raging and Rocking. Sometimes you can't quite hit that amount, but if you can nail their deck with like a really big Raging and Rocking, you might discard the cards needed for them to be able to get out of that bad position, right? So all you end up having to do is like, let's say you drag up something like a Manaphy and it's stuck because of Calamitous Wasteland, and then you use Raging and Rocking, you might get rid of the rest of their switches and their energies, and then and then they lose even if you don't mill them out right on that turn. So games can be exciting, sometimes they're not. Uh, you'll see what I mean in the game upcoming. It's very fun. Look, it's a bit of fun, all right? I, I don't suggest taking this to a tournament, but it is fun to, to bring down to maybe your local league and, and surprising somebody with a, a different take on how Whiskash can work. So um, hopefully the game that I'll demonstrate just after this will show you how to play it and I'll see all of you in the next live stream of video. So please subscribe if you like decks that look like this or follow me on Twitch. We can catch me live. All right, enjoy. See ya. Thanks. What I like about this deck, right, is that it doesn't it doesn't really stop my opponent from doing what whatever they want. Like it's not like I'm blocking them from retreat, right? All, all I'm doing is I'm kind of making it difficult, but the deck will always be able to retreat from from those positions, right? But what it preys upon is that it, it preys upon your opponent having to play cards to um to get anywhere, right? So, because my opponent must play cards to, to move forward, to like get out of being dragged active by counter catcher and stuff, then it sort of forces them to draw cards. And because they're being forced to draw cards, it starts getting tricky. So, <clears throat> I wish, I wish Greninja did just a little bit less damage. Imagine if it only did 80. All right, let's go Arvin. <clears throat> let's grab these two. Okay, we got everything. We got everything. VIP. And we go boom, boom. Oh, we need Manaphy as well. But like I don't I don't have to have it this turn either. But it's just easier to have. Just just grab it now, you know. We can do this. Boom. Boom boom. Send up the Diancy. Put down the Sandy Shocks. Forest Seal Stone. Draw three. Instant charge. Now, I think all of our Diancy was in the deck, so I don't think Vi Vi uh, Heavy Ball gets us anything. We can just Peonio. Peonio the what? We'll probably get rid of Heavy Ball, Forest Seal. What do we face? The Mirror? Start Earth and spiking them. We just start attacking. They were like, oh, I didn't think of that. Nah, Earthen Spike's not very good. I only get to attack every every other turn. But I think I think that's all you'd have to do in the mirror match. Like only have one Pokemon in play. If you if you knew it was the mirror match, only open one Pokemon. Wait until you can Thornton into Sandy Shocks. Did Turbo Energize not turn out to be worth it? Yeah. It, it's just not needed. I'd rather just draw three, you know. Let's 
Peonia. Alright, we went one, two, three. Gotta remember. One, two, three, I guess. I did not think this through. That's all right. Instant charge. Surely they won't have rope and boss. They've got to set up too much to be able to pull that off. So, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with this. Should be okay. I shouldn't have put this down though. That was a mistake. Arvin helps here. Maybe I should... Maybe I should be using VIP more aggressively. I'm, like, always wanting to save Star Alchemy. But these games would be way smoother if I didn't have to do that. Hmm. See how we go. Oh. Interesting. Oh well, they made they made life very easy for us there by doing that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we're just going to do this. Get ourselves sorted for the rest of the game, really. In charge. Or at least you moused over to try and read it. Don't worry, I do that as well. I do that as well. And it doesn't matter, like, for other games too. I, I do that sometimes. I'd be like, oh, what does that do? I'm like, or like, I want to see the stats on w whatever item or something. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a stream. To be fair though, there's some games that are like that. Um... Where there's like Twitch mods that let you do that. Like Slay the Spire. Yeah. Yeah. So don't feel too silly. I do that as well. <laughs> How you going? Welcome. Welcome in. Alright, so what are we gonna do? Sora! Thank you so much for the follow. Thank you. Um I need to get some energy into play. I am going to try and use Lotto to find a reversal. Uh oh. I can be patient. I can be patient. I can be patient. Let's do this. Because this is kind of annoying to have to, to power up. And just going to manual attach. And then we're going to instant charge. And we'll see. And then we got the Zinnia, which I'm really happy about. Because now we can Zinnia and get rid of all these energies to start absorbing. And we draw into the deck. So, very, very good. And then what we would like to do... Actually, what we do next turn is we go Ultra Ball. We get rid of a Fighting Energy and a VIP. Grab the Barboach. Then we Zinnia, the Barboach, and another Fighting Energy. See what we draw. We're in good shape. Trust. Trust. Okay, trust. We're in good shape. Alright, now we're going to start dragging up the mana feed. Them putting mana feed down, that's really bad for them. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't like attack the other turn. Maybe they're like, oh, I don't want to, I, I don't want to waste energy on the Diancy, thinking that I'm gonna come in with Sandy Shocks at some point. But if we never come in, then they they gotta start thinking, oh, okay, I have to start knocking out Diancy. Interesting. Yep. 
So then benching Menifee is really good for us. Really, really good. All right, promote the Diane C and we'll see. Another reversal, thank you. Attach that straight away. Play the counter catcher onto the Manaphy. Then Ultra Ball, discard a fighting and a VIP. Okay. Grab the Barboach. Zinnia, discard you and you. A bunch of very nice cards. Let's use Absorption. Now I am dealing with an issue here where I do not have... Hmm. Next turn is going to be a little tricky for us, but we'll, we'll do our best to navigate it. Instant charge. Thornton. Can't really risk having Radiant Greninja attacking the bench, but... Yeah, escape boss is, is always a, an option for them here, but what do you want me to do? Do you want me to use up the V-Star power to get it? Do you think Star Alchemy is worth putting the extra Diancy down? Or do we play into the idea that they don't have boss and rope? Because if it's me, and I'm up against a deck that can run Irida, I'm thinking they probably run a bunch of counter catcher. So the odds that they have both rope and boss in the same hand is not so not so scary. Or it's worth playing a little bit greedy around. Now, if they don't get rid of Calamitous Wasteland, we're just gonna have to send up the shocks. I think. There's like other ways that we could play it. We could go like Rod and and we could try and get it back. But yeah, I think I think like the most sensible thing to do is just promote shocks. Um, I can Arvin here. Thornton, I think Arvin. So I did not check to see if Rescue Carrier is in the deck, but I think that's fine because we should at least get one of these and we had Rod, so we're, we're all right there. We're all right. So now we've Rod, uh, sorry, Carrier. This will take us through the rest of the game, right? These two. It'd be really nice to have one more in play as well, but it, it'll be all right. It'll work out. We retreat. One, two. Like so. And then reversal energy attach. And now we counter catch uh, the mana fee. And then we use absorption. And then we just draw, I think. Instant charge. Pretty good. So what we need on the final turn of the game is access to Thornton and Whiskash. We need both. Let's hope they don't use Iono. That would be bad. But otherwise, this game is on course to be exactly what we want. Hey, Rejuva. Has deck been going? Yeah, it's all right. It's doing all right. We, we haven't really been picking up the wins, but they're all like really close. And that's the thing with Mill. The game's never over until until the end of the game. Y you know what I mean? I, I know that sounds really silly to say out loud, but it's um the the point is that the games are always close. That is a really good top deck, dude. That's a really good top deck. And now we're guaranteed if the last reversal is in the deck, that will hit it off this lotto. So watch this. See? Because uh, there was only that many cards left. Ooh, that's really good for us too. I'm almost inclined to Thornton to here. But I'm really... So like the, the thing that would really suck is like bosses... Some, if they somehow go like bosses, orders, cancelling cologne. 
That would really suck. I don't want to draw cards. If we if we don't draw cards, that's actually really good for us. Because we're guaranteed to be Ionu'd into the cards that we want. So, yeah. We haven't used our V-Star power yet. We're all good. We're all good. So, if they use Ionu in an attempt to avoid being milled, we'll get both Thornton and Whiskash, which are in the bottom um, the bottom five of the deck. So, I, I think that this is locked up. I don't think that there's anything they can do. They can escape, of course. They can get rid of... Uh, they could get rid of the stadium. They can uh, attach and retreat. You know, what have you. They're almost certainly going to get this last prize. Or not. Or not. So now, I'm going to start attaching to Diancie. Because now, I don't, I don't want to be in a position where one of the combo pieces... Well, actually, as long as we don't have both combo pieces in hand, we're okay. So... Yeah, we just end turn now. And we should have it next turn. Um, well. That's if we want to do it. And did I forget to magnetic absorption? That might cost us. Alright, they're taking cards out of their deck, so that's good for us. More cards, more cards, that's good. Irida. Alright, GG's, GG's, it should be. Because they did that, that means they can't uh, shuffle our hand, and they can't shuffle their deck. So we're in really good shape. I did magnetic, thank you, Hahu. I, I wasn't sure. <clears throat> so we get down to the end of the game, they've run through their resources because we kept using counter catcher. And holding it in place with Calamitous. So here comes the end of the game. Send it up. Alright, double check. Barberch. Yep. We've got uh, Ultra Ball. We get rid of you. We'll get rid of uh, you, I guess. There's the Barberch. Let's go for the high score. Hopefully they let us. Thornton. Grab the barbooch. And that's how you do it. Evolve to Whiskash. Boom. 17 card discard. See you later. Huge. That's how you mill. Whiskash, let's go. That's epic. Very funny. It's funny though, right? These these mill games, they all all come down to a very calculated last turn of the game, right? Um, when it does get exciting, is when you can't um, you can't mill out their entire deck. But what you can do is put them in a position where you leave them with almost no more resources to fix their board, right? So that's when the end is exciting. But there, uh, we sort of got the game that we wanted, right? The Manaphy was their downfall because it's a basic Pokemon. It gets hit by Calamitous Wasteland and we continue to drag it up over and over. It will be in the Discord. I will be in the Discord. I'll be making a video about it too. So please look forward to that. So... If you enjoyed that game, please subscribe on YouTube or follow me on Twitch where I'm live four to five times a week. So I'd love to see you there. And in any case, I'll see you in the next live streaming video. So take care.